welcome to my channel. My name is Julia Pacheco, if you are new here. And this is my little baby, Brinley. <laughs> so today's video is a what's for dinner video, obviously. But they're kind of like some of my favorite meals um, growing up that we made this past week. So we were in New Mexico visiting my family. So that's why the kitchen might look a little different in some of the clips. But we are visiting my family and my mom, my dad, and my sister helped me make some of my favorite childhood meals and some of my favorite meals in general. So stay tuned for those meals. Also, we made one of my favorite childhood desserts um, that my mom also loved as a child. So stay tuned for that. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss one of these What's For Dinner videos. Alrighty, now let's get on with the video. So my family always loves dessert first, so to kick this week off, I'm just showing you this dessert recipe my family loves. So all it is is two cups of these butterscotch chips and these two cups of these semi-sweet chips and then six ounces of these chow mein noodles and a cup of crushed up walnuts. So to crush up my walnuts, I'm just using this little chopper my mom has. You could easily use a knife. Um, I'm just chopping these up into as small pieces as I can. So while I was doing that, I had the chocolates on medium heat in my pot. And I just tried to melt them down just like this, stirring it occasionally until it got super, super soupy-like. This is the consistency you want your chocolate to be, and then you are ready for your next steps. So here we are adding the six ounces of the chow mein noodles to our sauce pot, and then we are adding our walnuts just now. We're just gonna kind of fold that together, trying not to crush the chow mein noodles. So next, you're gonna get your wax paper, and you're just gonna put it on the counter, and you're gonna spoon out some of that yummy mixture and it's going to harden in about two hours and then it will be perfect for you to eat. We love this recipe. My mom always made it for me growing up and it's kind of just like a family favorite. I've never seen anybody else make these so let me know if you've ever heard of them. For Sunday night's dinner we decided to make ribs. My personal opinion is my dad makes the best ribs ever. So I just wanted to show you guys the way he makes these ribs. So I start by having my ribs, obviously, and then I'm just seasoning it with this McCormick steak seasoning. And then I'm just coming in with some pepper and putting plenty of pepper all around, along with some salt. I just flipped it around and did the same on the other side. Just to let you guys know, we had about three racks of ribs we did the same thing to, but I just want, didn't want to take forever um, filming everything so I just showed you guys what we're doing on this rack of rib. So once it is all seasoned up I'm just kind of patting the seasoning onto the ribs just like that and then I'm just going to tightly seal it with this aluminum foil. So I squeezed all of my ribs onto a 9 by 13 baking dish. You will see that in a second. Um, you, if you are making this recipe, you just try to squeeze it into whatever baking dish you have. We just fit it perfectly on this 9x13 baking dish though. So I just put it in the oven on 300 degrees for 4 hours. Here they are after the 4 hours. I'm just taking this rack of ribs out and I just unreeled the aluminum foil and I'm just draining some of that excess juice down the drain. Now you're gonna add whatever sauce you want to. We're choosing the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Uh, we also like the Great Value sauce from Walmart. So any sauce you want. But I'm just kind of spreading it all around the ribs on both sides, trying to get it coated as perfectly as possible. But not that perfect, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
So back in the oven, these go on 280 degrees for about 30 minutes. So we're just cooking it for that extra 30 minutes just so that the sauce cooks onto it and kind of caramelizes it a little bit. And then also at this point, if you're wanting some baked potatoes with it as well, you could just throw some baked potatoes in the oven. That's what all those little aluminum balls are in the oven. And here I am just taking the ribs out because now they are finished cooking and I'm just gonna show you guys what they look like. These ribs were absolutely delicious. They were perfectly tender and amazing. If you guys ever try to make ribs, I highly suggest this recipe. It definitely won't disappoint you. And then we just served it alongside of an avocado, feta cheese, and cranberry salad. Here is everything all plated up. I just had my ribs alongside of a baked potato, some of that salad, and then three of those ribs. So this was Sunday night's dinner. We absolutely loved it and we couldn't have asked for a better meal for Sunday. For Monday night's dinner, I felt like kind of like a chicken broccoli cheese casserole. So that is what I am making right now. I just started by boiling my uh, two cups of rice. So you could also use minute rice or brown rice for this recipe, whatever your preference is. Just cook the rice through. So now I am just cutting my chicken tenders into small pieces just like that. I used about two pounds of chicken. And now I'm putting it into a nine by 13 baking dish sprayed with some canola oil spray. And then I'm gonna go ahead and season it with some pepper and salt. Into the oven it goes on 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the chicken is cooked. Now I'm gonna start working on the cream for inside of the casserole. I'm just using this can of cream of mushroom soup. You could easily use a can of cream of chicken, cream of celery, any type of cream soup that you like. And then I'm adding about a half a cup of um, sour cream and about a third a cup of milk directly into that bowl. And now I'm adding a cup of broccoli. I chose to use fresh broccoli but you could also use frozen if that's what you prefer. And now I'm adding about a cup of cheese. This is sharp cheddar cheese into that mixture as well. The only thing I'd change about this recipe is I'd add two cups of cheese next time because we love cheese. Also adding bacon to this casserole would also make it super delicious. So I might do that next time. So I just mixed everything to combine and then I'm adding my chicken that is all cooked through from the oven. And then I'm just gonna stir that in together. Here I'm adding the two cups of cooked rice into that mixture and I'm stirring that to combine. All right, now back into that nine by 13 baking dish that I cooked those little chicken bites in from earlier. I'm just spraying it with some more canola oil spray just so the casserole won't stick. And then I'm just dumping that casserole into that dish and trying to spread it out as evenly as possible. Now for the mixture that goes on top of this delicious casserole, it's just the Ritz cracker mixture. It's about 15 uh, Ritz crackers or one of these mini sleeves if you were to measure it. So now I have about two tablespoons of melted butter and I'm just putting it back in that measuring cup that I measured everything in just so I could use a little bit less dishes for this day. And I'm just putting those Ritz crackers along 
in it as well. And then I'm just stirring it together with this spoon just so everything gets coated in that butter. And now I'm just placing it on top of this casserole as even as possible. So if you're trying to be low carbs, you definitely don't have to add these Ritz crackers, but they're a delicious touch on top. And now I'm adding about a cup of cheese on top of that as well. Also, if your family um, really likes the crackers on top, you could add more Ritz crackers also. I'm just putting some salt and pepper on top of this casserole and then putting it in aluminum foil on top. I placed it in the oven on 350 for about 30 to 35 minutes until that cheese got nice and bubbly. Here's what it looks like out of the oven. I just think it looks delicious and I'm craving it right now. <laughs> That's my little sister. So here I am just plating it up on my plate. Everybody in my family absolutely loved it. And I really do think if you have small children who are very picky, I really do think that they would like this recipe as well. For Tuesday night's dinner, it is one of my favorite recipes of all time. They're called Cafe Rio Pulled Pork Burritos. I don't know if you've ever heard of Cafe Rio before, but it is a place here in Utah. Um, they serve a lot of Mexican food and it is absolutely delicious. So I'm starting by spraying my crock pot with this nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm placing my pork tenderloin inside. Now I'm placing about a tablespoon of this garlic salt directly on top of the tenderloin. Now for a mixture on the side, I am using this Coca-Cola. You use half of the bottle of Coca-Cola and then you save the other half for later. And then I'm putting a cup of water in as well. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put that directly on top of the pork tenderloin. I put the lid on top of that and placed it in my crock pot on high temperature for about five hours. Once the five hours is up, I am just shredding it and I just want to shred it into small pieces but not too small. My part was this meat's not quite cooked yet. It isn't? No, well, it's still like pink inside. Oh, it, but yeah, it's got another couple hours to cook. Oh. Okay, baby, I'm tired. I'm tired, I'm tired all day. I just turned it for a little about an hour ago. It's getting there. Yeah. It it, if you break it up, it'll go even quicker good. on the inside. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. So here's when all the flavor comes into action. So I'm just adding this mild red chili enchilada sauce into this small bowl along with the rest of the Coca-Cola bottle from earlier. Lastly, you're going to add a cup of packed brown sugar into that mixture and then you're just going to whisk it together with a whisk until the brown sugar gets broken down and everything is well combined. Then you're going to open up the lid to your crock pot and just pour that mixture directly on top so everything gets saturated in that delicious mixture. Once it was cooking for those two hours, I started working on my tomatillo dressing. All right, so this might be my favorite part of the recipe. This is a tomatillo um, sauce on the side that you're gonna be making right now. So I'm just chopping up one jalapeno into smaller pieces. And I have three cloves of garlic I have about a half a cup of cilantro and two tomatillos right here. 
So the way you're gonna cut these tomatillos is pretty much just like a tomato, but there is a peel on the outside just like that, and you're gonna wanna peel that peel off. So I'm just cutting these um, tomatillos into larger pieces along with the garlic. For the garlic, I am just um, peeling the outside off of it because all this is going to go in a food processor here in a minute. Into your food processor or blender or whatever you have, I just put in my cilantro. Next, I put in my tomatillos, um, jalapenos, and garlic. And then I just pulse this until it was in small chunks. Now into that mixture, I'm putting a tablespoon of lime juice. You could use lime juice, but I always just use this little um, squeeze bottle of lime juice. I think it works just fine. And then I'm putting the lid on and pulsing it again for a few seconds. For inside that tomatillo sauce, I am putting a cup of mayonnaise and a cup of milk. I use the best foods mayonnaise, but you could use any type of mayonnaise that your family prefers. So now my f into my food processor, I'm adding the cup of mayonnaise along with the cup of milk. The last thing you're gonna add is this ranch seasoning mix. And then you're just gonna add that to the top and you're gonna put the lid on and just pulse it for about 30 seconds 30 seconds until everything gets well combined. So this is what it looks like when it is all finished and done mixing. It should be creamy just like this. Um, it does make a lot, but we love eating it with chips and salsa for the next few days. So this is delicious. Here is what everything looks like finished and cooked through. This is what your pork your pork tenderloin should look like after those extra two hours of cooking. Here's everything we served alongside of it. I just shredded up some sharp cheddar cheese, cherry tomatoes, jalapenos, fresh avocado, and a can of black beans. So here is what my burrito looks like. I just started by putting a little bit of cheese followed by that pork tenderloin, a little bit of tomatoes, some of those black beans, and then some avocado, and then that delicious tomatillo dressing. I kind of smothered it in that dressing because it is so good. Here is our family's traditional New Year's Day dinner. So we are doing corned beef and cabbage. We make it every New Year's Day and St. Patrick's Day. Uh, our family really likes corned beef and cabbage on those two days out of the year. We got this corned beef at Costco. We have been really liking this corned beef from there, but we decided to try making it in one of these Reynolds airbags this year. So to start, you just put some flour, about a tablespoon, into the bag and you kind of just shake it all about until everything gets coated in that flour. Here we are just putting that corned beef inside of that bag. If you're wondering whose hands those are, that those are my mom's and dad's hands. I want them to take over this recipe because they're just so good at making this, I did not want to mess it up. So they're just putting plenty of salt and pepper on top of that corned beef. So on the side, we just cut up some red potatoes and some large carrots and a head of cabbage. Uh, we are just putting that inside the bag along with that corned beef. We kind of just threw everything in that bag, hoping it would cook just fine. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're adding about a cup and a half of water to that bag. Into the oven it goes on 350 for about three hours. So here's what it looks like all cooked through and finished. There are the red potatoes, the carrots, and the cabbage. Here we are just cutting the corned beef up just like this. Honestly, this corned beef and cabbage, I feel like it was the best corned beef and cabbage I've ever had. It was absolutely delicious and it was an amazing way to start the new year. For Friday night's dinner, we are finally back home in Utah, so that's why the kitchen looks different once again. So I wanted to make something super simple for this night, so I made these chicken sliders. So I just put a half a cup of water in my Instant Pot along with three chicken breasts, and then I put this Smokehouse Maple Seasoning directly on top of those chicken breasts. And I just put it in my Instant Pot on high pressure for about 14 minutes. Um, I was definitely crunched on time this night because we just got back home from New Mexico and I really had no time to make dinner, but we wanted to eat from home, so this is what I came up with. So here is the uh, chicken out of the Instant Pot. I just put some of this Great Value Original Barbecue Sauce on top of it in this bowl, and I just shredded it with two forks until it got into little small bite-sized pieces just like that. And on the side, I just made a side salad with some spring mix, cherry tomatoes, and some cheddar cheese. Here are the sub rolls we used for the sliders. There are the sweet Hawaiian rolls from Sam's Choice, which is Walmart. We had never tried these rolls before. We, we decided to give them a try. So I just put a scoop of that chicken on top of the sub roll. And then I just put a little bit of cheese on top and called it good. We absolutely love this. This was seriously the fastest recipe you could ever make. It really did take like 15 minutes once it was all finished. Um, we loved it. It was so quick and easy. Also, this Bolt House Ranch is absolutely amazing. If you have never tried it, I highly suggest you trying it. I get it at Walmart in the refrigerated produce section. So you should definitely give it a try, but this was a delicious recipe for such a crazy night. That wraps it up for this week's What's for Dinner video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down below the video so you never miss another one of these videos. Um, if you are new here, welcome. And don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it and comment in the comments down below what your favorite recipe was. I hope you guys have a great week this week and have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.